few minutes to just bring you up to date on the activities of future Earth's ocean-related global research networks, um, and particularly the Ocean Knowledge Action Network, for which I am the global coordinator. The Ocean Knowledge Action Network continues to grow. We have now more than 120 members, and we're adding members weekly. Um, these members come from more than 30 different countries, and uh, increasingly, we're welping, welcoming indigenous members into our network. This includes indigenous scientists, that is indigenous people who are trained in academic science, indigenous knowledge holders, indigenous scholars, and even um, indigenous traditional leaders are participating in the ocean can. Currently, we have members from five different indigenous communities around the world, and they're quite active in our work. The ocean can uh, relies on hubs. Um, we have, since the very beginning, worked very closely with our Ocean Can Taipei hub, but I'm glad to say that this year we also have welcomed a new hub called the Ocean Can Western Indian Ocean, which is a nonprofit registered in Seychelles. The, we call this Token YO. Token YO is focused on building a, a real regional um, collaborative Ocean Can group in um, these Western Indian Ocean countries, and also helping with some of the, the global administration and leadership of the Ocean Can community. We have yearly in-person meetings. Some of those meetings are focused just on Ocean Can business, um, like one we had in Taipei, but others are just meetings that we have at large ocean conferences where we know a significant number of our community members will meet together. So we met recently, for instance, um, at the UN Ocean Conference that was held in Barcelona. The Ocean Can community meets frequently. We have monthly community meetings where people come to share experiences, ask for help, and begin to build uh, stronger relationships with each other. We have these at staggered times, so they cover more time zones. And beginning this year, starting in October, we're going to experiment every third month with a sort of a different kind of monthly meeting. So in October, we will have our first meeting that will be hosted out of Taipei. We hope to have another meeting focused on Latin America and Spanish also um, before the end of the year. We do a lot of meeting um, in depth in something we call learning circles. This is where members of the ocean can come together to explore a topic or an issue in depth, and that meets separately from the monthly meetings. Currently, we have a learning circle on scientific storytelling and another learning circle on mental well-being. These are both sort of well-attended and very fun learning circles. And um, we continue to build more learning circles as new members come on board. Uh, so we invite any of you, if you're members of the Ocean Can community, to sponsor a learning circle. And also weekly, we have 15 minutes set aside that we call the Ocean Can 15 Minutes of Chill, where people can just drop in, say hi, check on each other, and I read a, an ocean-related poem. We've also recognized that quite a few members in our community, our global community, just can't make these meetings either because the time zones just don't work out or because they have bad internet connectivity. So we started meeting in person um, with our members in their homes, so in their home countries. And we've done this uh, repeatedly with Ocean Can Taipei um, throughout the island there, also in Malaysia and uh, in the Cook Islands and the South Pacific. As always, we try to make sure that our entire network is connected to high-level international science networks like SCORE, but also we work hard to bring in and interact with other um, networks that may be focused on social science, transdisciplinary science, as well as natural sciences. We are also active at the UN Ocean Decade level, particularly by working with specific programs. And we have um, two or three private sector partners that continue to be involved with the Ocean Can. This focus on relationship building and creating opportunities for people to come together has paid off in terms of um, us being able to host international and regional meetings or partici participate in those meetings. 
uh, collaborative research proposals between different members of the community who many cases didn't know each other before they started participating in the CAN. We've had CAN members inviting each other to their universities and their places of work across countries and have even um, collaborated on proposing and then being endorsed as a UN program. I have a number of side events that Ocean CAN members have sponsored at large ocean meetings. And uh, the work with the Ocean CAN through the participation in helping us build our own charter of values and principles has led at least two of our partners to create gender equality charters for their um, home networks where they come from. As I mentioned, uh, we work with Ocean Decade programs, particularly Marine Life 2030, and we'll continue that work. Also, um, the more than 27 affiliated projects that work with Marine Life 2030 and Empowering Women and the Early Career Ocean Professionals Group. This way of working too, by focusing on relationships and collaborations, has helped us uh, apply for and receive two future Earth grants recently. One is a cross-cutting grant um, where we brought people uh, in our network who are indigenous scientists working in ocean conservation or culture to the indigenous community um, in Taidong, which is a part of uh, the island of Taiwan. And um, in this community, the Amis indigenous community is preparing a proposal for uh, its first um, marine protected area. This will be the first indigenously led uh, marine protected area on the island. And they really, they need help because they don't have indigenous knowledge holders the way they used to before the colonial times. And by bringing our indigenous community members to um, the Amis community, we've really helped make connections so they can share knowledge that way. In the second grant, we're working with traditional knowledge holders and the Marai Moana Marine Park in the Cook Islands to understand how Satellite information and remote sensing, particularly from the European Space Agency, can help those traditional leaders with their traditional decision-making. Our steering committee has also grown and is drawn from the most active members of the CAN. It includes people um, quite evenly distributed between the North and the South, and between uh, males and people who identify um, as not male. And going forward, we will um, continue all of the work I've described here, particularly uh, focusing on this growing cadre of um, indigenous members of the Ocean Can. We'll uh, continue with site visits and proposed research. We will also try to host a series of listening sessions around the world where we ask our Ocean Can to tell us what's important to them and, and their regional communities so we can communicate to the UN Oceans Conference, a consolidated message from the Ocean Can about what we think the UN needs to know in order for us to achieve all of these global targets that we have that need a healthy ocean. In addition, we continue to be um, very active with Marine Life 2030 especially, and the Ocean Can has been the sponsor of two um, series of publications in the ICES Journal of Marine Science. The first uh, that we've completed now was a series on co-designing ocean science for sustainable development, where different programs within the decade wrote to us about how they plan to co-design ocean science in the decade. And now starting in September, we're hosting submissions from each of the vision papers. These are visioning white papers for the decade, one for each of the, the decade goals that tell us what we need to do by 2030 in order to achieve the goals of the decade. So if you um, want to participate in the Ocean Knowledge Action Network or uh, are interested in helping to fund our work, please get in touch with me at the email address you see here. In addition, um, Future Earth continues to move forward with its many ocean activities. Uh, just as a reminder, Future Earth is a global network that's made up of nine secretariats, 19 national hubs, and then 27 global research networks, of which four are explicitly focused on the ocean. That's SOLAS, Ember, the Ocean Can, and Future Earth Coast. And then the Earth Systems Governance has a very active ocean um, task force. And this ocean task force and all of the other GRNs have worked very closely with the Ocean Can in the past years 
and we continue to have that kind of cross-fertilization across future Earth networks. Future Earth uh, over the coming year is going to focus on um, the UNOC conference in Nice that I've mentioned before, and Future Earth is going to try to organize a delegation there. There will be a sustainability and research conference and Future Earth General Assembly that will happen in Chicago in 2025. There are um, joint programs all the time and projects and publications coming out of Future Earth, including the two I mentioned from Ocean Can, but also SOLAS has a, a workshop in 2025 that's being led by the early career researchers in that network. And then there's an ongoing series um, of which the Ocean Can has been particularly active called Decolonizing Sustainability. And this is an opportunity where we've been bringing in um, scholars, but particularly indigenous scholars from the Ocean Can community to talk about what is needed from an indigenous perspective to make uh, sustainability science work better for indigenous communities. So I'm gonna wrap it up there. Thank you very much for um, let, letting me present here. And uh, sorry, I couldn't be there with you in person. I hope to see you all soon. Thanks very much.